And if we come back here to this one area, which was gapped before, mm -hmm. you can see now we're getting better than a neg 60, neg 68 from two different APs actually. So if you were doing NEG 67 as your design criteria, only one AP fits that. So the idea of what you're, what you're representing, and, and keep in mind, this is not necessarily taking into account beam flex in that area at that time. So there may be deltas in what you're seeing. There may be margin of errors. Uh, but you want to make sure that your design fits the goals and the requirements that you are trying to accomplish. That's the important thing. The design and everything you build should fit the needs of the client devices and their capabilities, including the applications and the environment in which they work, taking into account walls and noise and neighboring networks. And if this is just a single story building and a lot of people will do floor by floor by floor with their channel plans and they'll put the APs in exactly the same spots and just change the channels. And that doesn't always work. Um, you may not want to have the APs directly lined up with each other. So if you're going to work with a multi-story building, uh, you've got to do channel placement and AP placement for each floor, taking into account what the APs on the floors above and below are going to do to that floor, especially if you do have those holes in the floor, like an atrium area. So that's really a, a, an important thing for multi-story designs is some people forget that RF is three-dimensional and they, they plan floor by floor by floor and they'll try to use the same channel plan on all the floors because left to right, it looks really good, but top to bottom, they've just created a nightmare. Remember those pony walls that were, that were defined in here? They are right near uh, straight up in, in the middle. Well, one of, this was one of the pony walls, but there were um, some pony walls in here. Maybe this is one of the pony walls right here. They're uh, right here that, that was straight down from where you were. The AP, that's the third one from the left on the top. Right near this one. one. One more AP over. And it's the little tiny walls just to the right of that. Yeah, right in there. You may not be able to see it with the APs there. You can also turn off the channels and turn off the AP names if you just want to see the walls. If you need to, for some reason, you can change your visualization. But So one of the things you, you can do is you can create a wall type and specify from the bottom to the top, how tall it is. So this would be our ceiling height right here, and this would be the floor. And you can define that, hey, our ceilings are, these pony walls maybe are only four foot tall or three foot tall. Or if you had parapets in here and you wanted to actually put in a parapet because you're mounting these APs on the ceiling and you've got a parapet that's coming over here, you can put in a parapet and define it here. Like for example, um, coming down 1.2 feet, from the ceiling down, you know, from the, from the ceiling down, right? So in this scenario, so floor up or from ceiling down. So in this scenario, this is the free space here. If the ceiling is 10 feet and this free space here is, is, is eight feet, that would be a two foot parapet. And that's important because that's going to block some of the RF signal. So it's important to know where that, where that exists. And then the other element of this is the, the uh, width as you define your dB value and then you define the, the barriers, actual you know, width of that barrier that defines what the actual attenuation is. You have an example of that, Brian? I, I don't have one. Um, uh, if it's a thicker wall or a thinner wall, that could be for shelving. It could be in a library. It could be for bookcases. That's a horrible thing because it's, it's paper and paper has a book. The books are paper and paper has a very high attenuated value compared to just wood because it's, it's not as porous as wood. So if it's a, a double wide uh, rack of books in a, a library versus a single rack. Uh, so you could get some very detailed planning in here. So you, I don't think there's a wall type you can't emulate with this. Right. So you can edit walls, you can create walls. Uh, you can create attenuation factors and specify. Uh, that's one of the nice things about Ekaha over some of the other planning tools is that you can define pony walls in here. You can define parapets in here and utilize those as, as R, RF attenuation factors. Likewise with things like uh, uh, warehouse racks. Warehouse racks usually don't go floor to ceiling. Sometimes they go up, but maybe you have a, a, a rack where the product goes 
higher than the than the rack, and you want to define that in the in the map. how allows you to define that. You can also coming back onto the carpeted space, go into environments where the cubicles aren't standard cubicle height. Maybe they only go up to the top of the desk because somebody wanted to define a more open floor plan. So you don't really have the blockage that you would normally have. And on the CAD drawing, it may just say cubicle. But when you go visit it, you realize it's just a half height. So you have to come in and adjust the height down as opposed to making it taller. 